Good evening. What do you see? It's very easy for a lot of us to look at a person in a wheelchair with crutches or with any kind of device, and that's the first thing we see. Today, I'm going to share with you guys a whole new idea. I believe that those devices, rather than being something that stop us from just achieving a dream, they're actually a potential. It is a challenge that allows you to go anywhere you want to be. So, I'm wearing this dress that a lot of you might be wondering what it is, I promise. Lady Gaga will call me soon. Uh, uh, this dress it was designed in one of my architecture studios where we were assigned to create a shelter, a body shelter. A lot of my colleagues decided to design a shelter that would protect them from rain, from heat, from cold. I decided to design a dress that would protect me from all those people that rather than looking at myself, they see the wheelchair first. That's why it's so bright, creating a focal point. And I did a test with my dress because my dress, as you can see, is designed with a bunch of buttons that I can take off as I feel comfortable with the person that comes to talk to me and I feel like the person is looking at myself and not the wheelchair anymore. So I can start showing pieces of myself as this person looks at me. And I'm going to do a test with you guys today. It's the same test I did the day that I presented this project. And it was that I got to interact with people by telling my story, and most of the time I got to undress myself. Do not worry, I have clothes underneath. <laughs> so, I'm gonna start with my childhood. I was born in Cuba, and as a seven year old, I decided that I wanted to do sports. And I think that my parents agree with me on that one because I had a lot of energy. And I started swimming. Two years later, I decided that swimming was not good enough. So I decided to become a dancer. So I danced for three years until I, got, I was paralyzed. I was paralyzed due to an ABM of the spine that left me in a wheelchair, as you can see. After going to many doctors and spending months back and forth and finally getting the answer from the doctor saying, yes, the illness was resolved, but you're going to stay in a wheelchair. I looked back and I said, well, let's deal with a wheelchair now. And I went back to the city and the first thing I asked my dad was to take me to the beach. Because I found out that even though I left swimming, swimming was the water was a place that would allow me to be free again. So I made my dad take me to, to the beach in October. I don't know if you know, but in an island, nobody goes to the beach in October. <laughs> That's just wrong. And my grandmother was very upset. <laughs> so I went to the beach, and I realized that I was the same as everybody else. I was the same as my brother, the same as my sister, the same as my friend. Nobody knew whether I was in a wheelchair or not. So my device disappeared. Well, two years later, my family moved to the United States, looking for new opinions from doctors again. Well, the doctors said the same thing all over again. But the most important thing I discovered was that I was free. I was free because I could do anything I wanted. And that I discovered in a day in high school that one of my teachers came up to me and asked him, asking me to join the swimming team because he heard that I knew how to swim. And I look at him, and I was kind of negative. I look at him like, seriously? You want me to swim for your team? Everyone walks in your team. I'm in a wheelchair, like if you couldn't see, right? And he looks at me, and he's like, Iliana, I'm asking you to swim. I'm not asking you to walk. I need someone to do the 500 meter. Are you willing to do it? I'm like, OK, sounds like a good plan. Well, I went back home and told my mother, and she wasn't very happy. She had to take the highway for the first time to take into practice. <laughs> that was painful. So I went to practice, and right when I was finishing high school, another coach approached me from a private club, asking me if I wanted to join his team, because he saw the potential of making the Paralympic team for the United States. Where's an athlete that doesn't dream of going to an Olympic or Paralympic game? Well, I had to turn down that dream, because I had to go to college. College was a priority. 
and I went to pursue my bachelor's and my master's degree in architecture here at FIU. So I started, I started my college uh, and did my third year talking to friends, talking to my sister, which was a great supporting this whole process. She was like, Lily, why don't you go back to the water? You love the water. And I'm like, yeah, I'm 21. This whole thing, if I don't hurry up, I'm just going to be too old to try it. <laughs> so I went back to the water and I asked the same coach from the private club. And his answer was very quick. When are you going to start with me? I'm ready for you. Well, I went back to the water and in eight months, I was able to go to Paralympic trials for Beijing. My world ranking was not high enough. I did not know what I was setting myself up to. It's funny, I, I even I saw the 200 breaststroke and I look up and I see in the board, Ileana Rodriguez AR. And I'm like, last time I checked, I only had Rodriguez with my last name. It was an American record and I didn't even know. So I can tell you that I was not ready for the Beijing Games. But I learned something. If in one year, I was ranked at high 13 in the world, in four years, we could work really hard to improve that ranking and make the London team. Well, that was my next mission. I left Minneapolis and came to Miami and told my coach that I had two news. One that I didn't make the Paralympic team, but the other one was even worse. He was going to have to put up with me for four more years. <laughs> so my coach took me back, and in two, in two years I was uh, recruited to be part of the United States national team uh, that trains in Colorado at the Olympic Training Center where I've lived for the past two and a half years. But you're wondering now, how did the Cubans survive the snow? <laughs> I know that's what you were thinking. Yes, I did survive. It's been three years now. <laughs> All that hard work was worth it, because I made the London team. I did make the London team, and at trials I was ranked uh, third in the world, which I was very happy with. And that put me in the London Games. When I get to the London Games, that whole ranking thing, that whole medal idea, is great, and that's what every athlete dreams of. But I found something even more important. There, all the athletes got rid of their devices, got rid of the objects. We're just there to race. We're athletes as any other athlete is. So, London didn't go, I didn't swim as fast as I wanted to, but I was happy with it. I represented the United States at a Paralympic Games. A Cuban? Are you kidding me? 12 years in the United States? To me, that was very good. And, but the idea that I want you guys to understand is that the Paralympic Games is as serious as any other Games. And it's sad that in every Olympic game, we see so much exposure from everywhere. The media especially like brings a ton of information about the Olympic Games. How much should we hear about the Paralympic Games? Not much, right? I really encourage you to look a little more and research a little bit about it. Because we train as hard as the Olympic athletes train, and sometimes even more because we have to compensate for the stuff that we don't have. And it's, I don't know if you've ever heard in London, it was the first time that a, a Paralympic athlete got so much exposure. And that was Oscar Pistorius, because he was allowed to compete in the Olympic Games. But let me tell you, there's athletes out there that are as fast, or even faster than he is. So I really hope that Rio 2016, all of you, look after those athletes that are competing out there. Not only in the Olympic Games, because all of my respect to the Olympic athletes but also for the Paralympic athletes. And one last thing I have for you guys tonight. I question you again. What do you see? Thank you very much for having me here tonight.